Good afternoon. It's been a long day. It's been a long three weeks. We're very happy with the verdict. We're happy that the jury took the time. And Kyle is not here. He's on his way home. He wants to get on with his life. Um, he has a huge sense of relief for what the jury did to him today. Um, he wishes none of this would have ever happened. But as he said when he testified, he did not start this. And we're thankful in more ways than one that the jury finally got to hear the true story. And when I say the media, I'm talking about social media and things like that. The story that came out from the beginning was not the true story. And that was something that we had to work to overcome in court. Um, and we think we did that. You said that you were both at times doubtful and confident. Did the length of the deliberation time uh, instill more confidence or was that instilling a little bit of uh, work? No, doubt. Um, I, I never predict how long a jury is going to be out, but it was the longest jury deliberation I've ever been a part of. I had an 18 hour and a 17 hour in one was a federal and one was a state case. Um, it was torture. And this might sound like a small thing, but the judge wanted us to be within 10 minutes. Obviously my office isn't within 10 minutes. So we had to sit in that room on the third floor and it was hell. What did you talk about the decision to put Kyle on the stand? Was that a close call for you? Do you think that made the difference in the case? You want the truth? Yeah. Had to put him on. It wasn't a close call. Um, at certain points, we wondered whether we would put him on. Um, we did, uh, we had a mock jury um, and we did two different juries, one with him testifying, one without him testifying. It was substantially better when he testified, I mean, to a marked degree, and that sealed it. But in Wisconsin, if you don't put a client on the stand, you're going to lose, period. What do you see as the crucial moments in the trial? There were a lot. I, 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 I mean, I think, I think it's at the beginning, but when Attorney Binger gave his opening statement and said those things that Kyle chased Rosenbaum down, I, I don't know where that came from to this day. It was ridiculous. Um, and that gave me something to really show and argue to a jury that this isn't fair. It's, it's not a game. And I think that was huge. Corey, you know, my co-counsel, and I stress the word co-counsel, he was not a second chair, was incredible. Um, we fought over who got to cross-examine Gage Grossquitz. Um, he won. Um, and he did a better job than I would have. This case has gotten caught up in issues of racial justice, the Second Amendment, self-defense. What does Kyle, what does your team want this verdict to be remembered for, this case to be remembered for? You know, when I took this case, um, I was hired by the two first lawyers. I'm not going to use their names. Um, they wanted to use Kyle for a cause and something that I think was inappropriate. And I don't represent causes, I represent clients. And the only thing that ended up mattering to me was whether he was found not guilty or not. Is that what Kyle feels are, as well? Is that what Kyle I, wants or does he? I believe that's what he wanted. And I had, you know, I told him when I first met him, when he was in custody, that if he was looking for somebody to go off on a crusade, I wasn't his lawyer. Martin, what Martin. You, throughout the week, you said, you know, I caught you in between court. You, you said, I never talked to you. <laughs> Go, uh, <laughs> that you were nervous, that, you know, you, you didn't know what the heck was going on in that jury room. Uh, looking back on, you know, all that time waiting nearly, you know, 27 hours to uh, this afternoon, uh, can you kind of walk me through sort of the I, I mean, I expected we kind of picked amongst ourselves, our wives, our friends, my associates in the building. And I had Tuesday at 4.30, so I was way wrong. Um, nobody had it going past Thursday. And, you know, there was talk today about whether they were going to deliberate on Saturday. I've never seen a jury, and I don't mean this as a slight to them, I, but they didn't have a lot of questions. We had no information that they ever fought. 
Um, they were just working through the issues. And, you know, so it didn't, it, it was the time that made me nervous. There wasn't any information coming out. They submitted five questions over that whole time. They never asked to rewatch the videos, you know, beyond those five questions. Was that concerning or puzzling question, you know, for you? Hey, you know, I was afraid of a compromise. You know, I know it's been reported that we asked for lesser included. We objected to all lesser included. Um, Kyle was questioned on lesser included because he has to be, but that wasn't our wish. That wasn't Kyle's wish. And we, as time went on, were afraid that there would be some horse trading in the jury room. Um, and that's what really concerned us. And Mark, you've been visibly frustrated with the prosecution multiple times. No. <laughs> <laughs> How would you characterize I was a prosecutor, Corey was a prosecutor, and I never went after somebody like they did. And when they put on the Kandiri brothers knowing that they were lying, that is a problem. This isn't, as I said in my closing argument, I'm not going to, you know, it's not a game. And you're playing with an 18-year-old kid's life. and they were willing to put those guys on. Detective Howard and Detective Andrew Amian had both interviewed them, and in their police reports said, we know you're lying. I can't ask that question when they're on the witness stand of the detective because one witness can't comment on another. So they put them on, they knew they were lying, and that's garbage. And I'm, I'm thankful we're never gonna have to litigate the issue regarding the drone video. But they kept saying, we stipulated to it. We let it in. We agreed to let it in because we saw the quality we were given and the jury couldn't see anything. And then they're saying, well, his first lawyer had it because it was on Tucker Carlson. John Pierce never had that video. We've talked to Fox News. We've talked to Tucker Carlson's show. The video that was on Tucker Carlson's show started right when Rosenbaum threw the bag. It did not start with the part that they showed at the beginning. It's a huge difference. That's what they built their whole case on with that garbage photo. And, you know, maybe you don't expect everything in a trial, ever. And that program that they used and the expert from the crime lab specifically says on the company's blog, Artificial intelligent enhancements are not to be used for forensic evidence. And they did it. And our research after it, it would have been the subject of a huge motion. We don't have to do it. And you said going into this trial, you didn't want this to be about a cause. But in your opinion, what do you think this verdict says about the second amendment? You know, I don't, I don't know that it says... I mean, there's... I personally don't like people carrying AR-15s around. You know, there was so much anger and so much fear in Kenosha on August 25th that people did arm themselves. And, I, I, you know, we knew from the beginning that if you read that statute correctly, I know everybody thought I was crazy. If you read the statute correctly, he was legal in having that firearm. And obviously once the evidence came in, the judge threw the charge. Um, they threw the curfew, and those were things that the state wanted to, you know, kind of hang their hat on, so they could argue he couldn't be there, he couldn't own the gun. What was the first thing that Kyle Wittenhouse told you after the verdict? Thank you. Mark, what was surviving victim Gage Grosskreutz uh, said in an interview in recent days that watching Kyle testify, it looked like a, a kid who got caught doing something wrong, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, what does Kyle want the families of the, the two men killed to know about how this all played out? Because he repeatedly talked about feeling like he had no choice. But clearly there's... there's if, if Mr. Grosquitz and some of the other people had let Kyle go to the police, there would only be one individual dead. Um, they referred to him, and I talked about it as an active shooter. Anybody can look up the definition of an active shooter from the FBI, law enforcement. He didn't meet it, but the way that those words are so charged, that's what they used. 
they wanted to paint him as that. Um, you know, I wish nobody died. I wish I never met Kyle Rittenhouse. And I don't mean that because he was a bad client. I just mean because then this wouldn't have happened. Whether or not he feels he had to do it, is he remorseful? Does he feel bad about for those families? I, I think he does. We've talked about it. Um, he, there's been so much talk about whether the tears were um, genuine. All I can say is when we prepared Kyle and we worked on his testimony, there were things we couldn't talk about in my office because it got too emotional and he couldn't handle it. He's in you know, counseling for PTSD, so he doesn't sleep at night. Um, remorse, I think, manifests itself some other ways. I don't think he can ever walk out here and say that um, because of the situation. But I know Kyle Rittenhouse, and I know what he feels. Mark, can I ask lines, you? Where does he go from here? I, <sighs> he has to get on with his life the best he can. I think eventually some anonymity will come back to it. Um, I don't think he'll continue to live in this area. Um, I think it's too dangerous. He's had 24-hour security since this happened. We're thankful that the judge protected his address. Um, everybody in this case, and when I say that, I mean prosecution, defense. To me, it's scary how many death threats we've had. You know, I was answering my phone on the way back from court in Kenosha. I don't, my office isn't that far. After the third death threat, I quit answering the phone. He had as much business being there as any of the demonstrators or the rioters. Um, that's all I can say. I mean, there's going to be people who will never agree with that statement. But, you know, if we all would just mind our own business a little bit, I think we'd all be better off. And that's a hard lesson to learn. But it, it, it could be. He was asked to be there. He wanted to help the community. And... You know, that's the narrative that the state went with. He shouldn't have been there. Um, he was asked to be there by Nick and Dominic, um, and the Kandiri brothers wanted security. And, you know, I'm not trying to blame anyone. I wish he had never been separated from Ryan Balch, and we would, wouldn't be here. Does he regret coming here to Kenosha? I, I don't believe he does. I, believe, I mean, you know, if he had to do it all over again and you said, same thing is going to happen and you're going to life is going to be put in a living hell for a year and you're going to not know if you're going to be a free man he would say i wouldn't go um but we can't undo time Mark, the, president, the president was just asked about the verdict he says i stand by what the jury has to say the jury system works I, <laughs> and i'm not laughing at president biden what i'm laughing at is a friend of mine who's a lawyer said, he goes, and him and I had done a big case together seven, eight years ago, and he said, do you think this Rittenhouse is going to be bigger than that case? And I said, you know I do. And he said, why do you say that? And I said, I've never had a case, and I don't think I ever will, where within two days or three days of one another, you know, the president and the presidential candidate comment on it. And both of them had such different beliefs. Um, President Biden said some things that I think are so incorrect and untrue. He's not a white supremacist. I'm glad that he at least respects the jury verdict. And if the government had any information regarding his cell phone or anything that he'd been to any of those websites or been online doing that kind of stuff, it would have been introduced in evidence. It wasn't. We were the individuals who released his cell phone, which couldn't be cracked by the FBI because we had nothing to hide. Tell got here a little bit late. Can you just kind of reiterate or go over his reaction immediately? No, I'm not, I'm not do doing reruns. Do you plan to represent him in civil, in any civil actions? What's that? Do you plan to represent him in civil actions? I, I'm a criminal defense attorney. I don't do civil stuff. You're a, veteran, you're a veteran criminal defense attorney. Talk about what's the one thing you learned, if you had to say the biggest takeaway from this case, what you learned? 
every case is different and every case has surprises. Um, you know, hey, I learned I could wait 24 hours for a verdict. What about, um, what happens to the $2 million bond? I expect there will be a fight over that. Um, you know, John Pierce is the person who posted the bond. Um, all of that money was raised on behalf of Kyle. Um, Lynn Wood and Fight Back say that they're entitled to it. Um, there was, and when I, I'm using round numbers, but there was half a million dollars, I think, that came directly from Wendy Rittenhouse from money she had raised. So there's going to be a fight over that. And I'm just thankful that there will be a fight over that because if he had lost, it wouldn't have mattered. You know, Kyle had aspirations to be a first responder. Is that still? He wants to be a nurse. He still wants to be a nurse. What would you say your biggest takeaway is from this 25 plus hour jury deliberation? What do you think that that says? I need to be more patient. getting rid of the first two lawyers. And, you know, that might be a smart alecky comment, but I mean that. And I got my best friend, Corey, to join, who I trust. Um, and to be able to work with somebody who you don't have to check their work, you don't worry about what they're going to be doing, you give them a project and it's done as good or better as you do yourself, it's priceless. There's been a lot of commentary on Up there with him every day? I, you know, I, I, you must have got here a little bit late. Um, I, I've known Tom Binger for a long time. I knew him when he was a civil lawyer. Um, I'm disappointed with some of the things he did, um, and I've said why. Such as what? Putting on the Kandiri brothers when you know they're lying. Um, changing your prosecution, going with provocation after you say that my client chased him down and shot him in the back. Um, calling him an active shooter when he's not. You know, justice is done when the truth is reached, and I don't know that it's set up to do that, but a prosecutor is supposed to seek the truth. It's not about winning, and this case became about winning, and that's probably why it got so personal. How about the judge? What do you say about how the judge handled the case? You know, I've, I've never seen so much made of so little, and that's not to pick on you guys or anything like that, but it, I've tried cases as a prosecutor a hundred years ago in front of Judge Schrader. I've tried cases as a defense lawyer, and him and I butted heads as a defense lawyer. Um, Judge Schrader gives you a fair trial as a defendant. You don't want him to sentence your client, okay? Um, but in this case, we were looking for a fair trial, and if we lost, we knew what was going to happen. So it wouldn't have mattered whether it was that judge or some other judge. He's getting life in prison. So I'd rather have a fair trial. I thought he gave us a fair trial. Um, you know, this, everybody got all crazy about the tumbler. Who cares? That has nothing to do with this. I, I mean, I, I've seen the tumbler used before. I've seen clerks pull things out and suspicious things happen. Um, Kyle pulled it out, and I'll be real honest, we had every juror scored on a, a, a sheet, and we were devastated when those th three of the six jurors were separated from the panel, because we thought they were three of our st strongest jurors, and Kyle pulled their names. So I think it's a good system. Um, I, you know, I've got a trial in front of them, you know, a big case. And maybe in that one, I'll think he's unfair, but he's a fair judge. He also said something about, like, in the future, he plans on rethinking the possibility of live coverage to this extent. Given what you guys have gone through, you know, he mentioned that you guys went through a lot, you, there were threats made to you. What do you think that that should be going forward, setting a precedent about? I don't know about that. You know, I, I think, I think that I've never done a case that was televised gavel to gavel. I've had cases that have gotten media coverage. I was kind of, um, I knew this case was big. I had no idea it was going to be this big. I mean, 
I've gotten calls from people I haven't seen in 25 years. It, it's just bizarre. Um, and I, I'll never be able to figure out exactly what it is that caused the interest that it did. Um, I don't think it made the attorneys act different. I don't think it made the judge act different. Um, I suspect when everything cools down, if there was another big case in front of Judge Schrader, he'd let the cameras in. Mark, would Kyle say anything to the crowd that's gathering down there now or with you on his behalf? I, you about, know, about, I mean, I don't, we don't know that there'll be trouble, but, you know, there's people gathering by the time we left, there were more and more people showing up. Do you think he, anything he might say could uh, make things go better than I, I, I don't. Um, the people who are going to end up causing trouble, they don't want to hear from Kyle Rittenhouse. I, it, and it's, you know, what, remain calm? I, you know. What do you think the wider implications of this verdict are? I don't, you know, I don't think it's, the, I don't think it's that kind of case. I mean, you know, when, when you want to talk about implications and precedent and things like that, is it ever going to happen again? You know, is there ever going to be just a total unrest in Kenosha or some other city, and that's going to happen? You know, I just don't see that. Um, it was a case about self-defense, the right to protect oneself from, you know, Mr. Rosenbaum. Don't want to speak ill of the dead, but he wasn't a nice person, and everybody knows why. And a lot of that didn't come in in front of the jury. So... I don't know that there's any broader implications. I don't want to make it bigger than it is. A couple of politicians in Wisconsin used the word vigilante to refer to your client since the verdict came down. How do you react to that? Maybe they should have watched the trial. Yeah. I know Kyle Rittenhouse said thank you to you. He said that after the verdict was read. Can you share any more about general reaction from him or his family in that moment? You know, it's one of those things that anything that's said at this time it's kind of meaningless. We have to take it in, reflect on it, and, um, you know, what's he thanking me for? And I don't mean to, that it's insincere, but it takes a while to process what happened today. I haven't processed it. What's next for you? I, I don't think, I, I can't answer that question. If I had to guess, and it would be a guess, I don't think they'll stay in Wisconsin. What's next for you? I got a trial in a week. I'm going to take a couple of days off and go to the Badger game tomorrow, which jump I've missed. Or, jump around? Hopefully. I've missed a couple of Badger games because of this trial, and I'm very much, we were afraid we weren't going to get to go because they were going to have them deliberate on Saturday, and I want to see them beat Nebraska. Do you have any sense that they agreed to those verdicts much earlier, but maybe just took some extra time? I, I don't believe that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's. I don't believe that. I, I mean, there was the questions, and I think I, I said this to some people yesterday when they asked to call off at four o'clock. You could see the tenseness in those people, the jurors. At least I could, or I sensed it, who were entering that room, and. Uh, you know, if they wanted to quit early because I think they were tense. And I, if there was some early verdict and they were playing all of us for fools, um, they're great actors and actresses. I don't think that was the case. Are you going to keep in touch with the Rittenhouse family? family? I, I believe so. I, you know, I have, I have clients from 30 years ago I still talk to. I, I get my oldest, one of my oldest favorite clients, he moved out of Racine, moved to Minneapolis. Um, he texted me congratulations. I talked to him once a month. I try to stay in touch with clients who want to stay in touch with me. Um, I like to see him do well, and I hope that Kyle does. Do you think that they'll keep a low profile? I hope so. What do you think the amount of time that the jury took to do this says about how they handled it? They took it very seriously. I, it, as I said, it's the longest jury I've ever had out. Um, wow. Can I go home? Anything else we haven't asked you?